He says that the wrath of God revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. If you talk to people, and I've, I've said this before, some people will say, if you say, well, what's, what's the problem in our society? Some might say abortion. Abortion is a terrible thing. It is. It's horrible. Some might say, oh, gay marriage. Every state should legalize gay marriage. And, you know, those things are... But we said this when we talked about this a few weeks ago. That's not the problem. Those aren't the problem. They're the symptoms of a problem. You know, the economy. That's not the problem. It's a symptom of the problem. And here's the problem. Here's the problem. Because that, verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them. Man has ignored and turned his back on God. I want to tell you something. One of the chief, in my eyes, one of the chief seeds of, of the problems that we have today Back in the 1800s, a guy wrote a book called On the Origin of Species. Y'all you you know what I'm saying? Evolution. But that's not the whole title of the book. You know, we hear Origin of Species. Here's the whole title of the book, the original title. On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Charles Darwin was a eugenicist. He was like the, he was like, he planted the seeds of eugenics. What's eugenics? That's the study of manipulating populations by trying to socially eliminate certain undesirable races. Hitler loved eugenics. That's what he tried to do in the, in the you know, the, the, the great solution. Uh, when there was a time... When, when this first came out, most scientists, you know, if you look through history, most people who were scientists, they believed in God. They might not have been born again Christians. They might not have embraced the, the Trinity and the God of the Bible, but they, they believed in God. If Albert Einstein was offended that they called him an atheist. He wasn't a Christian. He didn't believe in the personal God of the Bible, but he believed that there was a creator. But now, you know, at one time it was illegal to teach evolution in school. Well, now it's flipped. And when they started teaching, and I, I've done a presentation about science, falsely so-called, and all that. When they started teaching that everything just happened by accident, and they said, well, there's really no, science has proved there's no God. You can trace the demise of our society. When we stop understanding that there's a God up in heaven that said some things were right and some things were wrong, and all this, you know, it's scientific. It's not scientific. It's foolishness. But Satan has done a good job. He's done his work well. We now live in a, in a society where if you believe in the creation, you're considered stupid, uh, superstitious, overly religious. They'll laugh at you. They'll, they'll pretend like science has disproven that. So what do we have now? We have a generation of kids growing up not realizing that they have a reason to live. Not realizing they, they were a reflection of the Holy God that created them in his image. And we have a society, instead of thinking about what God wants, well, he's not there. That's just, that's make-believe. They're looking for life on Mars. They're spending billions of dollars looking for life. Uh, you, know, you know how much life they're going to find out there? Zero. Every time they spend all this money, they send a spaceship on Mars, and they dig holes, and they dig in rocks, and they design these things, spend billions of dollars. You know what they find? Nothing. Dirt and dust. Why? Because life didn't happen by accident. It was something God had done. He spoke it. He created us. And what we're reading here in Romans, it says in verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. It doesn't take a genius 
to look at the intricacy of nature. And if anything, now that we're able to go smaller and smaller, you know, at one time they could just see certain things with microscopes and so forth. But now they have electron microscopes. They can see the very, uh, the very complex things that, that cause life to exist. How can they say it happened by accident? All the, all the various, all the hundreds of, of things that have to happen in a living cell to, to help it grow and help it, uh, you know, uh, multiply and reproduce and, and, and metabolize food. It's, they're without excuse. If, if Paul was writing this in the first century, how much more? He says, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. It says in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the earth shows forth his handy. We're just looking in the sky. You know, that one presentation I did. You, you, you know why, you know why they, they came up with the Big Bang Theory? You, you ever hear? Some people think oh, it was scientific. They like, <laughs> back in the early, back in the 1920s, you know, scientists used to think that like, uh, you know, everything just kind of like always was the way it was. Well, you know, you know what they found out? Edwin Hubble. You ever hear that name, Edwin Hubble? He was a great astronomer. They named a telescope after him, Hubble Telescope. He found out scientifically by measuring and observing that the universe is expanding. Everything's moving away from each other. What a great discovery. The only problem was... People just like, they just ignored it because that meant if everything was expanding, it must have had a beginning. There must have been one time if everything's moving out, there must have been a time when it was all together. And, and according to Stephen Hawking, you know who he is, the guy in the wheelchair? He said most scientists just ignored it because they didn't want to deal with the idea that there was a beginning. They'd have to say, oh, there's a creator. <laughs> So, so somebody came up with the idea, well, maybe there was like a big explosion. That's where it came from, according to like those guys. That's what they say happened. And that's science. They say that's science. It's nonsense. God spoke everything into existence. Before he created the stars or the moon or the sun, he created light. That's what it says. Okay. Okay. 